For the teams of the Southeastern Conference, Atlanta, Georgia is always on their mind. For them, this is title town. And today, the eyes of the college football world will be on the Georgia Dome as the silver anniversary SEC championship game is celebrated and decided. The conference first played football in 1933, and that inaugural season kicked off with a simple goal, but a grand vision to become the measuring stick for all of college football. For the next six decades, from a foundation of grit and unrivaled passion, propelled by legendary players and iconic coaches, the SEC raised the bar for gridiron excellence. Victory is in the SEC's DNA. Resting on laurels is not. So in 1992, the league ignited a revolution. The first football conference championship game it was the brainchild of Commissioner Roy Kramer, and it changed the sport forever. The Southeastern Conference Championship game, matching Alabama and Florida. The inaugural title game saw the old guard Crimson Tide of Alabama matched against the new wave Florida Gators. The tide rolled to victory that historic day, but then the Gators devoured the league for most of the next decade. Now, a quarter of a century later, the past is a prologue to another duel between storied rivals. Bama, led by an old school coach who embraces the process and the currents of innovation as he chases history. Florida, once more the upstart, looking to stem the tide. But this time, they're the team with the throwback approach. Surely it's only fitting that against this grand 25th anniversary backdrop, Alabama and Florida meet yet again for the championship of the SEC. It's the SEC championship game on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper. Out of the West, top-ranked Alabama undefeated for the year. Out of the East, the Gators of Florida, eight and three, as these two teams meet once again in the 25th SEC championship game. It all began in 1992. Hi, everybody. Vern Lundquist and Gary Danielson. We are here for the final time. I'm going to get through this. I promise you that. <laughs> What are you looking for in this one? Well, you know, it's a, it's a big mismatch. At least everybody says that. But as a player, I got to say, you know, I played in tons of games. A big underdog. I never went into a game thinking I was going to lose a game. I also was wrong a lot in a lot of games. <laughs> but I, I've broadcasted one of these before. Oklahoma in 2003 in a Big 12 championship was supposed to be an unbeatable team. Kansas State knocked them off. There's no unbeatable team in college football. Well, Alabama has been on top all year long, undefeated. What do they bring to this dance that makes them so optimistically oh, yeah. they, the favorite? You got it. They just got greatness wherever you look. I mean, you can just close your eyes, pick out a player, and grab a star. Whether it's a defensive lineman, a wide receiver, Calvin Ridley, or Darius Stewart, Jonathan Allen, they are mismatches all over the field, and they can take advantage of any weakness you have. But you know the surprise of the team, we've talked about it all year, it's just amazing to come into this game a year ago. Jalen Hurts was watching this game on TV. He comes and he's the starting quarterback for a defending national championship. Quite a feat. I remember that K-State Oklahoma game. You were there. We were right here. Now. Florida is a prohibitive underdog. Is there a path for them to win this? Well, they've got some stars, too. They've got a legitimate defense, and I think their stars have to come through. They're playmakers. Jalen Tabor will make plays. He's confident. He loves to be on that island. And the other guy on the other side, Quincy Wilson, is just a half notch below. Two guys that allow the 
Florida defense to lock that box with eight guys, but they've got their leader back. Jared Davis is the guy who calls the signals. Not only does he improve his spot, but he makes everybody else on that defense better. That's the path that Florida defense has to make in a tight football game. Ninth time these two have met in the SEC championship game. It's 4-4. Rubber match coming up. Back in Atlanta, Alabama against Florida. SEC title on the line. field moments ago the Alabama Crimson Tide prohibited favorites in this game and not much thereafter here came here come the orange clad Gators of Florida and moments ago in the middle of the field on your left Steve Spurrier in the middle Roy Kramer and on the right, Gene Stallings. All three. This idea was the concept of Commissioner Roy Kramer. Spurrier coached Florida. Stallings coached Alabama. 1992. And also moments ago, Nick Saban with Allie LaForce. Coach, your quarterback, Jalen Hurts, continues to rise to the occasion, and now he faces one of the best defenses in the country. What's the biggest challenge this Florida defense poses for your team? Well, you know, they just got really good players. They got good players up front. They got really good linebackers. They got great team speed on defense. They can cover in the secondary. So everybody's going to have to do their job and execute, play well for the quarterback, and he's going to have to make good decisions to play well himself. Your defense hasn't allowed an offensive touchdown in over a month. How can they continue that dominance today? Well, I think we've got to win on the line of scrimmage, not give up explosive plays. Everybody's got to do their job and got to play together as a group. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Vern, I think uh, Nick has been worried all week about would Alabama's team be ready for the game. I think last year's game and the way Florida handled it so strongly with their defense helps his team focus on this football game. Well, in his second year as the head coach at Florida, moments ago, Jim McElwain, again with Ali LaForce. Coach, we've seen defenses force Jalen Hurts into turnovers early in games all season long. How can your defense take him out of his comfort zone early in this game? Well, big thing we got to do is we got to keep him in the pocket. When we get someone there, we've got to be everybody get around the ball, and that's what it's got to be. Last year's SEC championship game against Alabama didn't end the way you would have liked it. Why will this year be different? You know what? These guys got it figured out. They've been here. They know what to do. They're excited to be here. And you know what? They know that they're not a better place to be on the first weekend of December than in Atlanta. You always have that great perspective. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Good luck. I think the best thing going for Jim McElwain in this game is his Florida Gator team does not back up. They believe. Doesn't matter what we believe. They believe they can win today. Alabama won the toss, deferred, so Florida will get the ball to open the game. Series tied at four and four. These two teams played in the first two games, Legion Field in Birmingham. They also played in 2008 and 2009, and here they are again, back-to-back -back meetings, and this one bounces at the 15 and is returned all the way up to the 35. It's Mark Thompson. Took it on one hop. And let's introduce you to the Dr. Pepper starting lineups beginning with the quarterback. Here's Austin Appleby. Well, you go from Purdue to the biggest stage there is in football. 
I think Austin Appleby cannot wait to play this football game. He's been in college football for six years, waiting for a game like this. It's as tough as can be, but what the heck? Nobody said it would be easy. Graduate transfer from Purdue. Callaway in motion sets up behind Appleby. And off, oh boy, welcome to Reuben Foster and Minka Fitzpatrick. When this play started out, it looked and appeared pretty sure that they'd get the corner. And then Minka Fitzpatrick hits it head on and Reuben Foster dodges. There was nowhere for the, the back to go on the play. Jordan Scarlett, now we've got Scarlett in the backfield, three wides to the right and one to the left. Defenders lay off on this near side. They'll try Scarlett, nothing. Deron Payne, let's introduce you to the remainder of the Gator offense. It is a patchwork offensive line with Hartless at left guard and Jordan Schwinn and a sophomore. We will keep our eye on how well they do. Yeah, major concern is T.J. McCoy, number 59, the freshman at center. He's got going to have a tough matchup all day at that spot. Third down nine. Oh. Looks like Tyree Cleveland, the freshman. Ball start on the offense, number 89. Five-yard penalty, third down. That cost him five. And let's introduce you to the Alabama defense. About as good as it gets in college football. Tony Brown ejected last week for targeting, set out the second half, so he is back. He is the nickelback now as Minka Fitzpatrick moved over to strong safety to replace the injured All-American Eddie Jackson. Third and 13. Three down. Actually, only two. They bring three. Here comes Tim Williams. The pass is caught. Callaway at the 50. That'll give you a little life. Well, the best news for this Florida team is that the quarterback had time to throw. Just a three-man rush. Very surprised by that first call. It allowed Appleby to double pump. And then Callaway, it looked, wasn't a perfect throw, but good enough. Marlon Humphrey is not in the lineup. Another defensive back for Alabama. Humphrey hurt that hamstring a week ago, so they have to move Fitzpatrick back to corner. Sidearm it. It's caught out of bounds after a four-yard gain. That's Brandon Powell. And Ruben Foster. Here's Marlon Humphrey. He tried to practice on Monday and Tuesday. But watching them warm up yesterday, he did warm up, went through the walkthrough, but so did Minka Fitzpatrick take all of the snaps yesterday in a walkthrough at corner. Minka will go to right corner for the defense, and they'll move Anthony Averett over to the left side in, in uh, Humphrey's spot. Second down, six. Play action. Appleby flushed. Side arms it, incomplete, threw it away. Third down. No matter how competitive you are as a quarterback, and you don't get a major college scholarship at quarterback if you're not a competitive guy, you have to understand that this is a win against Alabama. You have to avoid those 10-yard losses and turnovers. Alabama feasts on those plays. Second, third down of this possession. On the last one, they got a 17-yard pass and catch. Brandon Powell in the backfield. Delayed pressure, Ronnie Harrison. But it's caught, Brandon Powell again. Appleby with a terrific job of standing up. Yeah, well-designed play. As you look at Ronnie Harrison here, the blitzing safety linebacker he plays in the linebacker position. They sneak him out of the backfield right here. Watch this. Very nobody there for Alabama. And again, remember Alabama now with the injuries, they're forced to play more new people. And as Harrison jumps, he actually runs into his own guy. Yeah. Rashawn Evans was the other player. And here's Ronnie Harrison, such a terrific part 
of this Crimson Tide defense. Timeout. See Ronnie Harrison, number 15, right in the middle of that bunch. He was able to trot off unassisted. Alabama has blitzed a couple times. They've gone three-man rush once, and Florida has handled it. Of course, that safety position, if Ronnie Harrison can't go, is already stressed without Eddie Jackson right there in the ball cap. And Gary, it is Hoodie Jones, number six, who's on the field. Appleby. First down 10, two first down, third down conversions. Two wide to the left, two in the right. Four man rush this time. Right side, out to be on the mark again. That's DeAndre Goolsby, tight end number 30, with his 30th catch of the year. I think those first couple running plays that were stopped so significantly by Alabama has forced Doug Nussmeyer to say, we need to try to move the ball with the pass first, and maybe we can come back to the run later. Second down, six. Wildcat. Yep. Nope, up under center. Oh, I'm sorry, my fault, I saw the shift. Jordan Scarlett. I'm so used to shotgun nowadays when the quarterback goes under center, I can't find him. <laughs> uh, especially when the uh, oh. the orange uniforms don't you make it easy. It. Yeah, just it is tough sledding. You know, if you can scratch out, you know, 75 yards rushing against this team in a game, you're going to think it's a, a big win. They are averaging the defense that is yielding 69 yards per game. That by far is number one in the country. Third down six. Florida is two of two on third down conversions. They'll spread them out again. Goolsby comes in tight now. Blitz threatened. Blitz coming. Appleby, good protection. Deep. Man open. Caught. Spin move. It's Antonio Callaway. You cannot have any better news than this for Florida. Watch them handle the cross splits perfectly. Look at that pocket. To have time like that against this Alabama pass rush that brought five that time. Remember, LSU sacked Florida seven times in that football game. First and goal. Not allowed a touchdown since they played A and M. Play action. Half will be caught. Antonio Callaway, Florida takes the lead. That is the first touchdown allowed since the game against Texas A&M by Alabama. Well, Appleby has been tremendous. Antonio Callaway showed the type of athlete he is, but I think the story of this first drive is that Malign replaced, injured offensive line. What a start for those guys. Eddie Pinheiro will attempt the extra point. He's perfect on the year, 27 of 27. Johnny Townsend is the holder. Three third down conversions in the drive. Well, they give a little ball fake inside, but the outside matchup one-on-one. -on -one, oh, nice patience by Callaway. He comes off, stalls, allows the quarterback time to hit him, and what a route against Minka Fitzpatrick. That is precision. 64 yards, 10 plays. Appleby, six of seven, and route to the touchdown. This SEC Championship Diamond Moment is presented by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. 1992 was the year, and Birmingham's Legion Field the location for the first ever SEC Championship game. The Tide would secure that first title with a dramatic pick six by Antonio Langham with just over three minutes remaining in the game. Alabama would capture their second title in 1999, and beginning a decade later, Nick Saban would lead the Tide to four more championship game victories. Antonio Callaway 
with three catches, 46 yards, touchdown on first and goal. What a start. Just a dreamlike start for the Florida Gators. Eddie Pinheiro will kick off. Darius Stewart is one of the two deep men, and Gary Dieter. So you've got 13 and 11 back. And this one will go deep through the end zone. Vern, we talked about the offensive line, but on this play also, a snap, a quick snap, caught Alabama trying to disguise the coverage. Mika Fitzpatrick is coming up one direction, and then the route is run right as he plants his feet. Watch again, Callaway delays and again beats Mika Fitzpatrick. Remember, Fitzpatrick has just played four games at safety. Now he comes back to corner, a little rusty. And because of that rust, it's seven nothing. And now, this is Florida's strength, their defensive team. And Jalen Hurts will open at quarterback, the freshman. Damian Harris is the opening Running back, 7 0 with 9.51 to go. Opening quarter. OJ Howard sets up to the left side. Fumble. That's six fumbles this year by the freshman quarterback. You can see him signal that the ball was to his right on the snap. He expected it right at the numbers, just off a bit. Took his eyes off and he was probably going to hand that ball to Stewart on the play. And another little miscue. You remember how badly Alabama started last week's game in the first half. Right side out of the backfield. Joshua Jacobs. And let's introduce you to the Dr. Pepper starting lineups. We begin with the freshman quarterback Jalen Hurts. Had a brilliant freshman season but turnovers have been a problem not only fumbling but he's also thrown nine interceptions under nine to go opening quarter third down 14 how safe do they protect their quarterback being chased tries to get around the corner caught and dropped Marcel Harris number 26 You have to believe that Gator defense getting extra juice. They've actually saw their offense score some points. That brings on J.K. Scott, 48 yard average this year. Antonio Callaway, who in his career has uh, a couple of touchdowns on punt returns. He's been average on his. Uh, Number of yards gained with the punt return, but yeah. boy, he is. He had one last year in this game for a touchdown. Yes, he did. Callaway, here's J.K. Scott. High, not terribly deep, and it bounces out of bounds. And Florida gets the ball again. That's a 46 yard punt. That's a new definition of not so far. That's pretty good. <laughs> Greg Gumbel and Trent Green coming off the field a moment ago, Jared Davis. You think they're sick of hearing they can't win? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you did spend a little time in practice. I did. Uh, in Gainesville this he week. He was so down. Jared Davis loves to play so much. He was so down at the dumps about not being able to play. He's just relishing the opportunity to finish his career in this football game. Ronnie Harrison back on the field for the Crimson Tide. Jared Davis out the last three games. Here's Callaway. Terrific start for him this afternoon. Play action. Whoop. Watch out. Intercepted. Picked off at the 47 by Sean Dion Hamilton. Lateral. Hamilton. Nope. Ryan Anderson was coming after him. Sometimes early success can give you confidence to try something you should not do. It's first down. They're trying to get the boot out here. It's covered well in the flat. If you don't have it, 
throw it away on first down. Just get rid of it, covered in the flat, and then Appleby tries to make a hero throw. Hero throws are tough against this defense. There's so many great athletes. Actually, when Hamilton gets it, I thought he might score. Yeah. And Appleby had success early, and he got brave. 40-yard return off the pick. Three to the wide left. Jalen Hurts has caught and dropped. Chauncey Gardner with the tackle, number 23. The Alabama Verizon Wilso offense, 60%, just under the national average. They've been here a lot. One of the guys that Florida is really counting on to have a game is Chauncey Gardner. He's playing for Marcus May. They're really, I think, maybe the, one of the best safeties in all of college football not playing in this game. Second and 11. Hurts lobs it left side over the head of Calvin Ridley. Well, same move that Antonio Callaway tried to do. You can get open early or you can get open late. And Callaway, excuse me, Ridley tried to make a few moves to Quincy Wilson at the line of scrimmage, and that threw off the timing with Jalen Hurts and made it an overthrow. Third down, 11. Trailing by seven. Alabama. Hurts. Our Darius Stewart is top of the screen. No safety in the middle of the field. Oh, nice disguise. Now they sneak back. Hurts fires it incomplete. Fourth down. Joey Ivy with the pressure that time, number 91. Keep your camera on Jared Davis when he goes to the bench. If there's another blackboard, he may break another one. To get a stop here after the turnover, great defense on every play and forces a poor throw. That brings on Adam Griffith on the right hash mark. Griffith for the season is 17 of 23. Cooper Bateman is the holder. Florida is taking a timeout. I wonder if they have too many men on the field or not enough. They did get a timeout. Yep. Before the kick, timeout, Florida. Maybe the coaches miscount because I looked at it. I thought it looked like 11. There's four down here, four in the middle, and three other guys. That's 11. But the coaches were panicking on the sideline. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to Alabama, Florida, or your favorite team from signing day to game day, you'll get instant coverage of every moment from every angle. Download the CBS Sports app today. One more thought about that last play. Perhaps McElwain suspected a fake field goal. Notice somebody on Alabama that maybe wasn't in their usual spot. He's willing to concede three. He does not want to give up seven after the great stand by his defense. So fourth and 11. Again, the uh, holder is Cooper Bateman, the backup quarterback. The snapper is Cole Mazza in his fourth straight year as the snapper, deep snapper for the Crimson Tide. And Adam oh. Griffith. And O.J. Howard is lined up right there. So you uh -huh. know, there's a lot of people on the field that can handle the ball. Yep. Knocks it through. And after the 40-yard interception off the arm of Appleby gave Alabama terrific field position they have to settle for three Florida gets the ball when we return six fifty eight to go opening quarter seven to three Florida they went sixty four yards on their opening possession Austin Appleby six or seven on that drive he then turned around and threw a forty yard pick yeah. You start feeling like, uh, you know, you're an all-pro quarterback back there. Ah. And then also, 
took great field position away from that Florida football team that they had earned so well with their defensive stand uh, just on that first down play. Well, we will know tomorrow yes. which four teams are in the playoffs. We have a question for everybody, though. And here's the scenario. If Clemson and Penn State win, we're assuming Alabama's in there. Don't tell Nick we're assuming that. Okay. Which team should not make the college playoff? Clemson, Washington, Big Ten champ Penn State, or second place Ohio State? That's really the crux of the argument. And we invite you to go to Facebook.com. The SEC on CBS if you'd like to cast a ballot. Left side, LaMichael Pirine. Jim McElwain telling us yesterday he wants to play Pirine. Brother, of course, a star at Oklahoma. And uh, Pirine showing a lot of promise in his freshman year. That was a seven yard gain and second down and three from the 32. Jim McElwain, I think most of you know, spent four years as Nick Saban's offensive coordinator before he got the head coaching job at Colorado State. Second down three. Appleby. Brendan Powell with the catch again. 2009 Crimson Tide. There's Nick in the middle, Jim McElwain on the right, 2011. Same pair. I remember in one of our conversations he said, How about this? Four years as Nick's offensive coordinator. Might be a new record. <laughs> Levi Wallace is now in the game at corner, number 39. Again, the stress on this. Alabama defense a couple of Knicks and all of a sudden injuries not Nick Saban's a couple injuries you got to play new players out to the right Callaway again gets a great block oh it was a great hold a flag is down no wonder he went down so quickly yeah I think the, uh, the block by Brandon Powell was good I think it was Cleveland that had the hold on the outside number 89 gotcha holding offense number 89 10 yard penalty. First down. Well, how about these missing players in the secondary? Well, remember when uh, Nick Saban made such a big deal out of Maurice Smith transferring? He said, you know, things could start to tumble downhill and it could be a problem. We've got a lot of good football players, but our best, our number ones are our number ones for a reason. And now Alabama is having to reach into their bench and play football players that don't get a lot of reps. And he talked to us about that yesterday, didn't he? Yes. About how he separates his number ones and they get almost all the practice time. First down, 20. Appleby with time. Intercepted again. This is Minka Fitzpatrick at the 20. Fitzpatrick, he will score. That is the 10th defensive touchdown this year. It's the second pick for TD by Minka Fitzpatrick. This is a tough one for Austin Appleby. Not bad protection, a very poor throw again. It's gonna go right here, crossing route into the inside, and he just doesn't hit his target. Nobody in his way. He throws that ball about four to five yards behind the receiver. Now, I guess there could be a miscommunication. Receiver is supposed to hook, but that's as bad as you can do. If you give Alabama a touchdown, we've seen this all year. You cannot give Alabama knots, right? N O T S. Eddie Jackson, ugh, uh, and Minka Fitzpatrick. His previous interception for a return was 100 yards. That one goes on the tote board for 44 yards out. See Appleby chatting with the injured linebacker, Alex Anzalo. Two picks, last two possessions. Adam 
Griffith kicks it deep, quite deep. Touchback. Let's call it a miscommunication because you can't get a better look than this. As we run this play, watch the vision that Appleby will have on this, clear. And as he lets it go, he thinks the receiver's gonna stop right there. Callaway continues, and it costs Florida seven points. When have you ever seen this very, well, I, I bet it's happened, but Alabama does not have a first down, and they have 10 points. Nuts. Non-offensive touchdowns, five interceptions, five fumbles, three punt returns. So 10 defensive knots. You came up with that acronym. No, I no, you didn't? Read it some. Really? I stole it. I steal everything. <laughs> First down 10. Try it on the ground again. LaMichael Piran. And let's go back to Brent Stover in the suit. Good to have you with us. It's not like you can play safe against Alabama. You're not just going to be able to run the ball between the tackles. No. Longest run so far, and we're in the first quarter. Seven yards. Brandon Powell breaks the tackle of Ronnie Harrison. Powell has been a major weapon early in this game. He and Callaway. Luke Del Rio started the season as the starter. He's out. Played only six games, injured. Ironically, Luke started his collegiate career as a walk-on at Alabama. Son of Jack Del Rio. There's another nothing play. Jordan Scarlett with that one. Well, when McElwain came here, he knew the story. And since Tim Tebow, it has been problems at quarterback. They have not gotten that guy that they can hand the ball to and say, score some points. And as we saw Steve Spurrier trot out there with that first, you know, championship from Florida, Gator fans are not used to this. That's right. Got him. Whoa, did they get him. And who else? Number 10, Ruben Foster. Arguably the best linebacker in college football. Well, Gators are looking for a big play. Ruben Foster makes it, but watch the secondary. There's nothing open deep. There's no one to throw the ball to. You try the flea flicker, you try to make a big play. And obviously now you got second and long. Third sack for Foster this year, but more significantly, that's his 10 and a half tackle for loss. Second and 22. Try to sweep to the left. Ouch. Jordan Scarlett. Dalvin Tomlinson, number 54. And a little conversation, helmet to helmet meeting there. Third and 20. See what Jeremy Pruitt dials up defensively here. Or probably more appropriately, Nick Saban. Well, I think Jeremy's, I think Nick will let him have this third and 20. <laughs> okay. Two minutes to go, first quarter. 10 7, Alabama. Ooh, that was close. Yes, it was. Brandon Powell, under extreme pressure, they threw it away. Fourth down. That snap almost hit Brandon Powell as he was going in motion. Tim Williams, Rashawn Evans got in there to mess it up. Just as that ball, look how close. Oh. Man, they want to create problems with the motion, but I don't think anybody wants it that close. And inside, Florida was lucky they didn't get called with a holding play call on that offensive line. Just a toss away by Appleby. Johnny Townsend on to punt. And Trayvon Diggs. Is oh! Got it! Got it! Touchdown, Alabama! Josh Jacobs. 
Make it Derek Gore. With the block. You got it. Good eye from the booth. Derek Gore, number 27, comes off the edge and makes the play. We had a blocked punt last year that resulted in a safety for Alabama. They do about the same look. Instead of it being Minka Fitzpatrick, it's Derek Gore. That is a special teams touchdown. And Griffith, that's blocked. You can return this. He's got help. He's got more help. He's got a convoy. No flag on that play. How about that? David Reese, the linebacker, heads into the tunnel. It was blocked by Jabari Zuniga. Well, we've had a little bit of everything early on here. Absolutely. Let's start with the blocked extra point. Right through the middle. What a breakdown for the Alabama football team. And Zuniga makes himself skinny and gets in there and almost took it right off the tee. Well, this all started here. There's Gore coming Gore with the block. Yep. yep. From the right side of the punter, the left side for the Alabama defense. And uh, again, the Florida defense is saying, just let us handle it. We'll be fine if we can just play defense. David Reese. Gore got the block punt, and that led to a touchdown. Zuniga got the blocked extra point, and that led to a two point play. The new fashioned way. It was, but 17 7 is a lot different than 16 9. A seven point game instead of a 10 point game. That is a huge play. This will be returned at the 10, out to the 25. Chris Thompson, number 85. I mean, when you get these touchdowns, returns, interceptions, or blocked punts, one more look at the block field, but just see the arm over inside. What you do is make yourself skinny, turn those shoulders. And Jabari Zaniga did a perfect technique. That is defined as a blocked. Point after touchdown conversion. Right on the touchdown, Michael said field goal, met extra point. But wow, what a turnaround. 138 to go. First quarter. Appleby Powell. Brandon Powell with the catch. I mean, you'd like to criticize the Alabama offense. They've had two three and outs. I get it. But they haven't had many chances. Oh. They're scoring on defense. They have to give the ball back all the time. Them's the rules. And uh, let's check in with Allie LaForce. Hey, Vernon Gary. Adam Griffith snuck into the tent pretty quickly, but I did see him holding his shoulder. It appears that he had a shoulder injury. They're checking it out in the tent now, and as soon as I know more, I'll let you know. Second down here. Thank you, Allie. 16 to 9. That's Powell in motion again. Appleby keeps it. And fall short of the first down. Ronnie Harris with the tackle. Well, that's the great skills of the Alabama football team. Looks like a big play. Ronnie Harrison comes up and says, All right, you fooled us. You gained five yards. Now it's third and short. Final 45 seconds, first quarter. Ford jumped out to a 7 0 lead. Alabama got a field goal to make it 7 3. There's the snap. They'll test the middle, and they will not get the first down. How's that for gang tackle? Deshaun Hand. It's minus seven total yards. That looks like a misprint. Defense, two interceptions, special teams. A blocked punt. 
return for a touchdown. Well, theoretically, their offense is going to get another chance here, but we'll see. <laughs> End of the first. Surprising score, 16 to 9. We'll return to Atlanta with this message and a word from your local station. Adam Griffith just emerging from the tent, testing his shoulder. That roar, by the way, is uh, the introduction of MVPs from the previous 25 years. So after the blocked extra point, Adam Griffith gets shoved and falls on his left elbow. And maybe, you know, he, it popped the shoulder because as he kicks here, you can see right away he feels that shoulder blade. Let's go to Ali the Force. Vernon Gary, from what I can see, it is his left shoulder. They're taping it up and having him do some shoulder movements to see if he has any mobility with the tape on it. All right. The MVPs are on the field. Promise you this the two biggest roars came from Peyton Manning to the left and Tim Tebow a little to his left. And Jason Campbell, who was the MVP, yeah, that was that. These Alabama fans went crazy booing him. Familiar with that a little bit. Well, there, you know, there was uh, Greg McElroy was down there. Danny yep. Werfel was down there. So there were a few others. But I do agree. It's not good to be Auburn today. That no. might not be a good no, idea. not at all. I had a chance to chat with Steve Spurrier last night. He said one of the pleasures of, uh, of coming to this event was his chance to talk with Terry Dean, who was the most valuable player in the very first SEC championship game played in Birmingham. Well, impressions so far. Well, I was I was anticipating that I would say such great news for Florida. Their offensive line is blocking. Appleby got started. They score a touchdown. Their defense gets three and outs. And then that Alabama special teams and defense that has been such a big part of the team has basically taken over the game. And now you wonder, you know, for Alabama, they just catch their second win now. It, it, it's a scary time. For the Florida football team. When's the last time you saw an Alabama team minus seven yards on offense and 16 points? Nothing to do. No. They, they struggled early against Ole Miss when they fell behind, but they have so many different ways of scoring. This is a beautiful punt by Johnny Townsend. Fair catch called at the 11 by Trayvon Diggs. Well, this uh, Florida defense has been just brutalized by injuries. There's the starters, and one by one, they went. Starter after starter, players having to come in. Few of them have come back, but all year to lose seven different starters, that's quite a lot of juggling for Jeff Collins, defensive coordinator. 16-9. Jalen Hurts with one fumble thus far. Bradley Bozeman over the over the football, and now time has been called by the officials. You know, one of the staples of Lane Kiffin early in a game is trying to get wide and soften up the defense. Well, we start to see those jet sweeps and those pitches and those wide receiver screens to try to soften up that Florida defense. Damian Harris is the running back. Ridley. Not a lot. Well, they tried it, but it was stopped. I think Kylan Johnson, number 28, no, to the outside that time. Polite, number 99, makes the play and turns it inside. Second down, seven after the game of three. I can tell you for sure, they practiced the jet sweep a lot on Wednesday when I was there for practice. Harris gets around the corner, breaks the tackle, and has a first down for Alabama. 
Well, great penetration early by Florida, but no tackle. And then I thought David Bryan, number 93, had a chance for it. But then Harris does his job. Is what a great runner he is. 5'11", 224-pound sophomore, first and 10, 16-9, early moment, second quarter, Hurts. Well, wide, he might be strong away. Well, when you're Jalen Hurts, one of the first things you have to understand is you're going to handle the ball a lot. You cannot make mistakes. He started out slow last week settled down and found his groove. He knows he's got a great defense. He knows if he can hang out of the ball, settle down, get the offense going, there's plenty of time left. He's got such a great demeanor, it's maybe the strength of his game. His calmness is extraordinary. Yes. Second and 10. Harris, oh boy, up high. Jabari Zuniga, ouch. Yep, that's going to be 15 yards face mask on this play, and that's why Damian Harris was stressed. Watch, grabs a hold of him. Oh, that oh, is a bad one. Brother. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 92. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, let's just understand, when you're one of those defensive linemen, you're fighting off those big guys up front. You're sticking your arms out. You're just trying to make plays. You're grabbing anything you can. And that time, it was a bad one. Immediately checked out on the field, and now Damian Harris will trot to the Alabama sideline. Joshua Jacobs, who recovered the block punt in the air and scored the touchdown. It's first down after the penalty at the 39-yard line. Jacobs unsure exactly where he was to line up. Here comes the jet sweep. They go back to the left side. There's Cam Robinson with a block. This is Calvin Ridley. Foot race. Back to the left. Down. First and goal. Marcel Harris caught up to him. What a beautifully designed play. Timed out so well. Great patience to really get Florida to bite. Watch all the movement here a little bit and then a throwback. Cam Robinson gets a block and then Calvin Ridley shows in space. Very tough to handle him. Up the middle, Jacobs. Down to the four. No doubt, Lane Kiffin's signature on offense is keeping the defense off balance by forcing them to defend the 53 yard wide field. It's the biggest impact he's had on this Alabama offense in his three years. On second goal, right it, fly it, caught and dropped at the six. I hope you watch the pregame show because Rick Neuheisel drew up this RPO. That's exactly what it was. The quarterback had the option of either handing the ball off to the running back or hitting the guy in the flat. This time Jalen Hurts says he's going to throw it. Should have handed it off. <laughs> Lane is going, bad read. Oh, dear. <laughs> We've seen that gesture before. Should have handed the ball off. He had him. Yeah. Third and goal. Bo Scarborough, who has become a load at running back. Hurts still has it. Being chased, fires it, caught, touchdown! Gary Dieter, graduate transfer from Bowling Green. Two weeks ago, Garrett Dieter had a great line of stats. He caught three passes for one yard and two touchdowns. <laughs> I guess he gets the ball near the goal line. Adam Griffith is on the field to try the extra point. Dieter with 94 catches last year, his last year at Bowling Green. And that gives me a segue. Among those who attended Bowling Green, who's present here today, 
Olympic figure skating gold medalist Scott Hamilton. Your partner. Yeah. There he is. There Great he is. Happen. Crossing route right there. Nice touch by Jalen. Feathers it right in there on third down. The big play was the wide receiver screen. There was a lot of good in that drive, and now Alabama served notice. They're ready to play offense, too. Brent Stover in New York with his Heisman watch, presented by the new Nissan Titan. Jake Browning, not a big stat line last night, but this one of his two touchdown throws in leading Washington to their first Pac-12 title since 2000. Baker Mayfield throws for 288 and three scores in winning the Big 12 title today. Deshaun Watson goes later in the ACC, guys. All right, Brent, thank you. We got uh, a list of uh, yeah. Heisman candidates. And I think it's open again. And I don't think there's any lock on this thing. Deshaun Watson could have a tremendous game tonight, come from nowhere and steal it. That is allowed to go through the end zone. Sometimes you have a good call, and sometimes you have a good call at the right time. Corner blitz on the play allows Ridley to catch it. Cam Robinson to go after Chauncey Gardner, the safety, and that's why it was so open. When you're trying to make plays with defensive calls, Sometimes it's a gamble. They got caught in a bad one there. There's Ridley. Came into the game with 63 catches for the year. He's got three in this ball game. Just under 12 to go first half. The Florida defense needs a little rest here. A couple first downs. Right side, connected. Randy Powell. Tony Brown also there to help. Well, let's introduce the duck. Affleck. In the first half, the Affleck trivia question. Since 1950, which two teams were ranked number one from start to finish? We Nick rehearsed, Saban. We rehearsed that yesterday. I got one. Yeah, you did. Right. I can't remember that part. Back. <laughs> Did I get one? I don't think I so. I don't think so either. Uh, another running play that uh, garners not much. Well, Scarlett was a ball carrier. Yeah, speaking of number one, this incredible run by Nick Saban building this team. And at some point in every year, his team had been ranked number one. I don't know if this will ever be duplicated. Of course, his first year here, or rather in Tuscaloosa, was in 2007. And among the lowlights that year, they were defeated at home by Louisiana Monroe. And they haven't looked back much since the second season. Callaway goes right and is introduced to Anthony Averett. Anthony Averett did a great job. He took on the blocker with his hands. He was patient on the edge. He knows he's got Callaway coming at him. He holds, he holds, and then he bounces out and makes the tackle. Great defense. So Johnny Townsend is back on the field. His last time out was a 55-yard punt. Trayvon Diggs is back. And seeing Diggs back there is another reminder that Eddie Jackson was the punt returner before he got injured in Florida uses its second timeout. Jim McElwain not happy. Time call. So musical guest Bruno Mars the weekend and Lady Could Gaga. you delay your cruise until after the fashion <laughs> show? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no. That's a no. Uh, that's an emphatic no. <laughs> there we go. Trayvon Diggs is back again. Uh, Johnny Townsend back to punt. Not sure if uh, Jim McElwain saw 10 guys out there, but he called timeout and wants to get this punt correct. It's a fake. It is a fake. Townsend in trouble. Thank you very much. Anthony Jennings, number 33. 
Pretty dangerous strategy. He's been aggressive all day, trying to find a way to put pressure on Alabama. This might have been, obviously, now. But that's a pretty tough call after a timeout to go fake. He had to believe in that huddle. Yeah. Alabama reminded that defense that, hey, make sure he punts it. Actually, it was dropped on the play. It was supposed to go inside, and it was dropped. The snap was just a little bit high, and Cam Stewart, a backup tight end, dropped the snap, the direct snap on the play. First down, 10. Hurts dropped, speaking of. O.J. Howard. That seemed to be catchable. A little behind it. Not sure exactly. Just looking at that play again on my ISO. Not sure exactly who dropped it for Florida on that play, but it was definitely going inside. Might have been taken Brian. Yes, it was. 93. Second down. Ridley comes near side, number three, in the slot. Hertz rolls out, being chased, incomplete. Intended for Miller Forrestall, number 87. One of the things that Florida was very confident about is that with Jared Davis back calling the defenses, it was going to make the rest of the defense better, especially David Reese, number 33. Reese had been, as a freshman, having to call all the plays and play. They felt he would be much improved, meaning that Davis would make both linebacker positions much better in this game. On third and ten, three wides to the left. And you can see him directing everybody right there. Yep. Our Darius Stewart is the right side wide receiver. Hurts. Oh, dangerous. Intended for Josh Jacobs. And the Dr. Pepper statistical leaders. Hertz now 5 of 10. One touchdown, one fumble. Harris, nine yard run. And Calvin Ridley, three catches so far. It's going to be Adam Griffin again. You know, another problem that watching Adam Griffin in warm ups. He was having trouble slipping. He changed shoes three times. His left shoe and settled on the one with the orange stripe. Kick is up, but kick is left. And is it good? No, it is not. How about that? You can lose your confidence in warm-ups. And then he got hit. And right now, he does not feel good about his game. And keep in mind, he had an extra point blocked and returned for two points by Florida. Beautiful overhead view of downtown Atlanta. Ferris wheel to the left. And it's a good time to cue the duck back. 1950, which two teams are ranked number one from start? To finish, Gary did get one of the two, <laughs> as he is reminded doesn't me. Doesn't count, does it? <laughs> Florida State in '99, Southern Cal in 2004. Well, let's, see if, let's see if uh, Doug Nussmeyer can go back against his old coach. He was the yeah. offensive coordinator here for Alabama, as well as Jim McElwain, and get Antonio Callaway back in the game. One of the goals was to get a few 50 50 balls downfield. Do you try to throw one and just let your best athlete make a play deep? He's in the slot. Appleby looking right the whole time and completes it to Siante Lewis. Oh, Antonio Callaway is their best athlete. When the quarterback can find him, He's quite a weapon. Again, when you have struggling quarterback play, it affects your stars. And in this case, Callaway has not broke out and had the season maybe he expected. Well, and after that first drive, the quick start, he hasn't been much of a factor since then. And of course, Appleby has thrown two interceptions, one return for a touchdown. Minka Fitzpatrick. Appleby pressure from the backside. 
intercepted. Oh, no, no, he dropped it. He dropped it. Ronnie, Ronnie Harris. Yeah, they tried to fake the quick screen to the outside. And as Austin Appleby hung and hung and hung, you can see the safety make the play. Watch the quick screen to the outside. And then Ronnie Harrison is the guy who retreats to the middle, reads the ball, comes across, and almost makes another pick. How would you like to have to read that one? You're looking to your yeah. left, and the safety was just outside your right, comes all the way across the field. Third down four. Brandon Powell sets up alongside Appleby. Incomplete, Ronnie Harrison. Again. Knocks it away from Brandon Powell. Not only does Ronnie Harrison come into the box to play almost a another linebacker as a strong safety he retreats to free safety and makes a play and now he matches up on a small quick running back and makes another play and you know so far they have not had that feeding frenzy on the quarterback tim williams got there and made sure he held on he didn't want a penalty good play by timmy williams second punt now for johnny townsend and digs all the way back to the 10 yard line Looks for blocking help. He's got it. Trayvon Diggs, watch out, Dietrich. There was a block in the back and no flag thrown. Well, it's another true freshman, brother of Stefan, who plays for the Minnesota Vikings, waiting his turn to be another star here in Alabama. A deep punt. Allowed Diggs to get in the open field. And then from there, you saw his great skills. It was Garrick Dieter that had the block in the back, but they did not call it. 47 yard return. All right, Brent, thank you. 828. Now, time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. You know, you, there's all types of tools to finish a job and all different ways to do it. To win a championship, you can do it with a lot of different guys at quarterback. In the past, we've seen the running quarterbacks that win championships. We've seen the pocket guys, Winky, Krenzel, Weiner, McCarron. And then, of course, we've seen the dual threat guys, Ward, Vince Young, Tebow, and Cam Newton. There's a lot of different ways to run an offense, and I think one of the most remarkable things about three years here for Lane Kiffin, he's done it with three different type of quarterbacks. Or has he ever? First down, 10. They hand it to Scarborough. Stiff arm. All the way down to the 20. He's going to be ruled out of bounds at the 21. Post Scarborough came into the second half of last week's game and gave that power look to this Alabama offense. Kind of reminds me of the, you of the guys in the past that used to run that tailback position. Doak Walker. <laughs> Doak Walker. That was Derek, quick. Derrick Henry. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, Doak was 5'10", 165. Right. I, any moment I can drop his name and I do. <laughs> yeah, Derrick Henry would be a, <laughs> a little more appropriate comparison. Well, as they were coming out of the field, I was thinking, okay, what does Lane do? And if I'm wondering, you know, Florida's wondering, is he going to go play action? Is he going to go RPOs? Or is he going to slam you with the big back? Forrestal goes left. And Scarborough to the five-yard line. They are going to slam you with the big back. <laughs> and that's what I talk about this Alabama team is why they're so unique. They can beat you in so many different ways. If you have a weakness, they can exploit it. Power one day, pass rush the next, play action pass, or running quarterback. They have the offense and players to do it. Little toss to Scarborough. He tries to cut back and cannot. That's a loss on the play on first down and goal. Chauncey Gardner, the second man through. Alabama's red zone, one of two trips today. One touchdown, one field goal. Good substitution by Florida. Alabama substitutes. You see the official holding over the ball. Allows Florida to bring in four fresh bodies on the defensive line. Joshua Jacobs is running back now. 
Hurts. Incomplete. Intended for Jacobs. Jared Davis was defending and defending well. See him throw his hands up. I didn't touch him. Davis had the play stopped early, and he had the play stopped late. The ball, he was covered in the flat, and when Jacobs turned up, he had him covered deep. Great defense. Damian Harris is a very late add, and Joshua Jacobs comes off the field. Here's Harris, number 34. Calvin Ridley, as he usually is, is wide to the left. Hurts looking left all the way, drills it. Incomplete for Gary Dieter. And it'll be fourth down. Safety from the opposite side almost made this play. Hurts fires it as hard as he can, but Chauncey Gardner comes across from the left side. The quarterback's right, and he comes all the way to the left side to click, just get his fingers on that ball. Chauncey Gardner, that would be the case of being there. He was being there at the right time, at the right spot. That's a groaner. Griffith, 25-yard field goal attempt. That was uh, bad, too. Yeah. I tell you, he's psyched. It happened in warm-ups. When your kicker changes a shoe three times and then gets his extra point blocked, you know it's in his head. Another line drive. Yes. Never comfortable with that plant foot on that one. He was not comfortable. Well, this beautiful view as nighttime sets in of downtown Atlanta. This gorgeous city has three skylines, one downtown, one in what is called Midtown, and the other, oh, 10 minutes north, Buckhead. We've enjoyed for the last eight years spending all of the football season here in Atlanta. Time to pack up and go back to Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris Thompson, nice return. Let's go back to Adam Griffith. Well, you can tell he just does not feel well. He kicks way behind the ball on this one. Watch how far behind he hits that ball. That thing never went more than 12 yards off the ground. He just skinnied above. It was good. But fortunate, you could tell by his body language, he's not happy. First down 10, Florida now trailing 26 to 9, 620 to go. Just feels like to avoid a, a, a just a blitzkrieg by Alabama. Down 17, Alabama gets the ball in the second half. How important this drive is. Draw play. Got about four. That was Jordan Scarlett, his seventh carry in the game. Well, if Florida could, you know, wind down three or four minutes, even get a field goal right here, you got to feel better going in halftime. Jim McElwain grew up in Missoula, Montana. Quarterback at Eastern Washington University, from which university he graduated. 5.44 to go before the break. Happy to be back. Right side. Whoa. Well, coming up at halftime, this is always fun. It's the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. And $100,000 in scholarship funds will go to the person who wins it. Allie LaForce will be down there to help guide the contestants through. That's coming up at halftime. Well, on your right, Appleby hit his first six of seven. And Jalen Hurts, only six of 14. Well, let's see if Timmy Williams or Ryan Anderson can put some pressure from the outside this time. What a spin move on this near side. Pass is intercepted. Tony Brown. That's three picks. Tony Brown is matched up inside right there. So many times in and out of the doghouse for Alabama. 
but he's a five star football player and you can see when the ball's in the air what Nick Saban loves about his DBs I want guys that can handle the ball that's what I look for first so Brown with the interception and Alabama takes over at their own 38 yard line that's a 50 50 ball that Florida is willing to live with you know they want an incompletion there they don't obviously want an interception but those are the ones they want to throw up and try to win Jacobs to the 50 yard line first down Kylan Johnson with the tackle a gain of 12 split zone play meaning the tight end goes one way the back goes the other way you read it everybody's just blocking a step to the air you just find an opening same play slip Jacobs and he got three after almost going down in the backfield Jalen Tabor number 31 Appleby on the bench See O.J. Howard, number 88, go over there and line up. Such a great weapon. Nothing tonight. No. For a pass, but he's been blocking. Let's see if he gets involved here. Stewart right, Ridley left. Double tight end. And here goes Stewart. They fake the sweep. Hurts back. Goes for the shorter man. How about that? Nice call, Mr. Danielson. Well, the other day, Vern, I was coming down the elevator with a couple of Alabama play, uh, fans, and they said, full tide. I said, okay. And then they also said, be nice to us. And I say, how about if I say, throw the ball to O.J. Howard? And they go, say it. <laughs> Good flip. Jay Howard. It could be a first and goal. That's the play again off of the split zone. They've been running it early. This time, Jalen Hurts keeps it. OJ Howard was coming across and blocking on two previous plays. This time he slips into the flat for the completion. Jacobs. Jacobs. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. How about that drive? Josh Jacobs, a freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So the drive before they hammered him with Bo Scarborough. This time they brought in Damien Harris for the zone. Then they hit OJ Howard. Calvin Ridley and Ardarius Stewart are great players. They've been quiet. Yeah. Hale Henchkiss, the backup tight end, was one of the blockers then. And so also was Cam Robinson. Jacobs for six. Alabama is rolling. We're back in Atlanta. You see the Georgia Dome. Last time this game will be played here. And then go to the right, and that is the new facility for next season. And the Geico halftime report coming up when we go to break. That uh, that geometrically designed right. new stadium, I'm going to date myself here, but it looks like something from Buckminster Fuller. Come on. Pass me on that one. Come on. You're on your own. Oh. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I said I was going to date myself. He was the innovator of the geodesic dome. Chris Thompson. Nope. Mac Wilson, flag is down. During the return, illegal block in the back. On the return team, number 44, half the distance to the goal. First down. There's the new stadium, Mercedes-Benz Mercedes Stadium, ready for occupancy next year. The Atlanta Falcons and, of course, the SEC Championship will be played in that facility. 
There's a lot of things I'm going to miss about Javern, but when you go back and give me a stadium, I don't know. Not going to miss that. <laughs> 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 oh boy. This is not a list you'd like to join. Right. Hey, you just got to discipline yourself. You got to look forward and you got to accept the coaching, what you've done all week. Hello. Jordan Scarlett with that carry. One more look. We talk about so many stars. Here's another star, Cam Robinson, a three year starter at left tackle. Watch him reach and pin his guy inside he's still blocking as the touchdown is made we you know get so mesmerized by all the stars on the edge and they got stars inside as well total yards on the ground for florida now five with 306 to go before the break happy to be at the goal line nobody open fires it DeAndre Goolsby, the tight end. And that gets him out of a deep hole. 22 yard catch. Believe me, when you're going against Alabama, you can feel that mental clock of that pass rush. Appleby feels that he's got time. He drifts out and makes a big first down. Now 12 of 20 after a 6 of 7 start. The Michael Piron in the Wildcat. Tim Williams, number 56, the first man there. Minka Fitzpatrick was also adding his talents. Reuben Foster. These guys here just get their hands on the offensive linemen. Look how open the linebackers. Hamilton is, and on the edge, Williams is. Nobody get to him. The inside defensive tackle eat up blocks and allows those linebackers to run and make plays. Second down, 11. They had 15 yards last year. Brandon Powell again in motion. Out to be back. Here comes Tim Williams. That Great catch is throw. made by Callaway. Great throw. Right over the top of Reuben Foster. It's not easy. There's options there, but you have to be willing to take chances. Look at this throw. Just over the outreach hand of Reuben Foster. On that play, Jeremy Pruitt will tip his hat and say, hey, you can make that throw, you're going to complete the pass. 138 to go before the break. First down, 10. Second consecutive conversion in this drive. Appleby back into the flat, caught, but not for much. Jordan Cronkite and Reuben Foster flew out, tackled him almost immediately. Well, one of the best defenses, certainly in the country this year, but look at this. First in points per game, first in rushing yards per game, total yards per game. Total yards thus far for Florida, 140, 135 has come through the air. Come left, got it, Goolsby again. Oh, nice little move. And Tony Brown makes the tackle, but they get the ball all the way to the 37-yard line. That's Sean Dion Hamilton that time. He's pointing to his right knee on the play. Oh, boy. As he tries to stop on the move by Goolsby, you could see right away he felt that in his knee. He tried to plant running full speed. Watch when he stops right there. Okay, guys, That's when he feels the sh shot of pain. Uh, he's up at the 42 yard line. He is standing now. We'll need assistance. That one doesn't look good. No. Another defensive injury for the Crimson Tide. First down to 36. Play action. Appleby throws it outside. 
103 to go before the break. Terrell Hall. Uh, he's an obvious pain in Sean Dion Hamilton. Rashawn Evans replaces Hamilton. Powell goes wide to the right. Three receivers out to the right, one to the left. Second and ten. Powell to the 26. That might be enough to move the chain. Again, good mental clock by Austin. Knows he doesn't have a lot of time to throw the ball. Taking the short throw, and now the hurry up to try to pick up this first down. And off. Got the first down. The clock will stop. Well, they reset the chain. Jordan Cronkite with that carry. And remember the two special teams timeouts early, meaning they only have one left. 36 seconds. Half a minute. Appleby fought. Oh, he's got a man wide open. DeAndre Goolsby touchdown, Florida. 25 yards. Gators now with 15 points. Well, it was Reuben Foster. It was matched up against the H back, and they do the wheel route out and up. Reuben Foster bites a little too much, puts his eyes in the backfield, does not have the eye discipline, and gets beat for the touchdown. A 92 yard drive. Goolsby now with four catches. Eddie Pinheiro, who almost went to Alabama. He did commit at one point and got an in home visit. And Jim McElwain <laughs> dunked him in the cup. You see Nick Saban, there's always a guy that was supposed to have that guy. And he'll find him when he comes to the bench. As Burns said, a great drive. Gorgeous overhead view of the downtown city of Atlanta. 19 seconds to go before the break. I look across the way and see our guys here. Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones. And here is the kickoff. Our Darius Stewart. Now stay there. Now let's take Austin Apple through his day so far. Well, it started out so well. That opening drive, and you could feel that he had the confidence, but it actually was too much confidence. He got out over the his skis and trying things he shouldn't have done with a couple in the middle. That one's not a big deal. You're gonna try those. But this last drive, poor play. Between Foster and Evans, two guys, two linebackers looking at each other, and Evans goes, I thought it was you, I thought it was me, and that's why Nick Saban says, we didn't do it right. I thought it was great that Nussmeyer talked to, to uh, Austin Appleby, said, calm down, nice drive, we got another half, you know, let's just settle down and do what you can do. Don't try to do too much. Alabama keeps it on the ground. Joshua Jacobs. And that in all likelihood will be it will be the final play of the half. Jalen Hurts in the first half eight of 16. Jalen Hurts in the first half eight of 16. Did have a fumble but he also threw for a touchdown. Thirty three sixteen. Now it's time for inside access presented by AT&T official sponsor of the SEC. Here's Allie with Jim McElwain. Coach after the first half. Now it's time for inside access presented by AT&T official sponsor of the SEC. 
Here's Allie with Jim McElwain. Coach, after the first half, took a turn for the worse. How huge was that last touchdown drive for the confidence oh, of this team? I'm telling you, that was big. And, you know, we've been doing some pretty darn good things, shooting ourselves. Obviously, special teams, you know, it shows where your depth is a little bit. We're getting beat up there. We've got to shore that piece up, come out and get a stop right here at half, and then uh, see what happens. Thank you, Coach. All right. Allie, thank you. I see the lights are on at our set over on the far side. End of the first half with Alabama leading. We'll be back with a Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway after this message from your local station. Championship of the SEC. And we welcome you back to the Georgia Dome in downtown Atlanta, where the Crimson Tide top ranked lead Florida 33 16. But what must they do, Florida, that is? I don't think they have one path. I mean, they have to continue to throw the ball. I think they realize they can't run it. I think a year ago, Jim McElwain came in here and played a little more conservative. You know, with Treon Harris, he didn't believe he could throw it. This year, he says, I'm going to try more stuff. I'm going to give it a bigger go at it. You know, without the, you know, you know, non-offensive touchdowns, you know, they'd be in the game. But that's sure. part of the game, too. Well, they started with such promise. That yes. opening drive, and 64 I, yards. And, boom, boom. Yeah, and I think that's really what really got that false confidence in Austin Appleby. He... You know, so I, I know that feeling. You you feel like you've got it all going for you. It's your day. I've got it. I'm going to lead it. And then all of a sudden, it spins really fast. Let's go down to Allie, who's with Nick Saban. Coach, after a first half where we saw the offense, the defense, and the special team score, what did you focus on with your team at the half? Well, I think we've got to play a 60-minute game here. You know, we didn't play great in the first half. We didn't play with a lot of consistency. We've got to do a better job of covering on defense. We've got to do a better job of adjusting. We've got to control the line of scrimmage a little bit better on offense so we can keep the ball some. But, you know, this is a game, man. We, 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 we carries for minus 13. He is the second-leading rusher on this team and has by far the most carries. There's Lane Kiffin. And... His father and mother are here. His dad, Avarian, and his mom, Pamela. Dad was a high school, is a high school football yeah. coach at Channel View High. He gave up a lifting day to come here today. That's quite a sacrifice. He spends time in the weight room, too. I never, yeah, it, it <laughs> looks that way, doesn't it? Jalen Hurts was a power lifter in high school. That is a decent record when leading at the half. Here's Hurts. Ridley better been better to just toss that one away. Yeah. Kylan Johnson with the tackle. Coached by his father at Channel View. That's a suburb of Houston. Enrolled in January of 16. And he played the role of Deshaun Watson on the scout team. He is the first true freshman to start in an SEC championship game. The last true freshman to lead his team to a national title was Jamel Holloway at Oklahoma in the mid 80s. Here is Damian Harris. Well, you mentioned Houston, and that just reminds Alabama fans that the name that is prominent for that job is three year offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin. The word is that he will go talk to them. I did talk to him before the game, and, uh, and Lane's getting good at this. He did not deny it. So I take that as a yes. I would think so. Yeah. And it puts an interesting dynamic as Alabama enters this playoff run. Tom Herman, of course, resigned and accepted the job at the University of Texas. Third down and 10. Used to be a screen down. Is it anymore? Nope. Fourth down. So Jim McElwain told Alley at the end of the first half, first we've got to get a stop. Right. And then we then we have to uh, tackle better. Then we have to control the line of scrimmage. We have to catch the ball better. We're not covering well. He just about covered everything, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He just keeps. He talking. did. 
J.K. Scott is on the punt. Antonio Callaway, ever dangerous at the 30 yard line. This is only the second punt for J.K. Scott. Now a junior, Denver. But after. Up back almost got knocked into Scott. And another angle punt. And I saw Nick Saban congratulate him last time he did this. He does not want Callaway to put points on the board. Instead of just rooting it down there as far as he can, he's challenged. And another one of those bad punts for 40 yards. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> ha. Time goal. This SEC Championship Diamond Moment is presented by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. In 1994, the Georgia Dome became the host location for the SEC Championship game, and it was the Tide and the Gators for the third straight season. Former walk-on Chris Doring gave the Gators the lead with just over five minutes remaining, and they clinched the win with an interception in the game's final minute. Florida would go on to win five championship games in the Steve Spurrier era and would add two more with the combination of Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer for a record total of seven titles. Ninth meeting between these two in the SEC championship game. First two played in Birmingham 1992 and 1993. They split those two. And then Florida in 94. Again in, four, uh, in 99, Alabama won. Number one and number two in 08 and 09. In 2015, a year ago, Alabama 29, Florida 15. That's uh, remarkably similar to the score we have now as Florida, having made a defensive stop, takes over. Callaway lines up behind Austin Appleby. Fires it inside. He's got a man out to the 38, Josh Hammond with a catch. Well, Reuben Foster ran it down, but a successful first down place. Get it started. Reuben reads it about as quick as anybody at middle linebacker. He's an All-American middle linebacker, first round draft pick. Again, I read that the new projected draft, six first round draft choices from this Alabama football team. Mm. Second and six. Well, they did break the first tackle. Yeah, Deron Payne this time. Number 94 is the guy that just wins inside. Under right there. Takes on Ivy, throws him away, and makes the tackle. What a play. A little help from his guys, but it was his play that time. Injured player down. That's Martez Ivy. And he's one of the guys that was struggling whether he yeah. would play in this game That's anyway. Were you hearing the interrupt over the other Assistant to his feet. Well, you get another look at it. He does walk off without assistance, but with a serious limp. And our aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear for 60 years Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest rivalries. Martez Ivy the left guard walking off with that uh, noticeable limp it's third down. There's a full ship Powell. Heads alongside Appleby. Remember, they've been trying to isolate Powell on the outside. Got him again. Yep. Oh, and nice play. In and out. Oh, there's oh, a play. They grabbed him that time. Yeah, Ronnie Harrison. Early in the game, when Harrison made that defended play, when he knocked it down, it was close to having his hand on his hip. And I saw the Florida coaches say it to him. The, the official had his hand on his hip, Defense, and they got that one. Number 15. That's a spot foul, automatic. First down. And it actually was a good penalty by Ronnie Harrison because Powell would have been free in the middle of the defense. You just got to live with that. You can't get beat inside, but if you do, it's better to get a penalty. Powell has been the third down back. 
Here's a note. That is the first penalty of the game against Alabama. Play action into the flat. Caught by Powell. And he gets only a couple of yards. Reuben Foster again. You know, it's interesting for this uh, Florida offense a year ago in this game, they were 0 for 11 on third down. Now, if you would have told them they would be 5 for 10 on third down against this Alabama defense, they'd say, we're doing really well. Again, the big mistakes have cost them. Second down, nine. Tony Brown hurries over to the near side. Now looks back and defensive adjustments. Now Brown sneaks inside. Into the flat again. Incomplete. Intended for Jordan Cronkite. Well, how about these historic coaching runs? Bear Bryant with six titles. See Saban is next, both at LSU and Alabama. Some great names on that list. Bud Wilkinson. Alabama, by the way, is on a 24-game winning streak. Uh, 12 men in the huddle. They're yeah, going to get there you go. Broke the huddle with 12 men. Institution on the offense. 12 men in the formation. Five-yard penalty. Third down. in there's 12 in there not fast enough as Cleveland leaves the, the field and it's been a couple two or three times the young freshman Cleveland has been the guy yep. jumped off sides lined up wrong and this time was the wrong guy the 12th man in the huddle so it becomes complicated now for Florida third and 14 Appleby has been intercepted three times after only two interceptions in the regular season. Here comes the pressure. There goes Appleby. Fires it. Caught. DeAndre Goolsby. Wow. And did he get the first down? Yes. Jeremy Pruitt dialed up the blitz. A corner blitz that time. Picked up nicely by Florida. Appleby gets out and Goolsby makes a first down. How about that? Another one. That's six for 11 on third down. And so a fresh series at the 45 yard line, trailing 33 16. Florida dying to get in the field goal range. Reverse. Josh Hammond. Oh boy. Rashawn Evans. That's the backup, by the way. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> he got beat on that touchdown. But he has played a lot of good football for this Alabama football team as one of the three inside line. Blitz. Appleby chased. Got him. LaMichael Pirine down the sidelines. Knocked out of bounds, but it's going to be first and goal. Ronnie Harrison made the tackle. Well, remember the throwback screen that Alabama ran? Well, McElwain and Nussmeyer got one just like it. Throwback to the running back, and Ronnie Harrison gets him. But what a big play that was for this Florida offense. At the two, first and goal. Nine oh five to go. Give it off to Scarlett. Not much. Well, if you're Doug Nussmeyer, you now have to think that on second down, this could be your passing down. Now well, we're getting information that Antonio Callaway might be in the locker room, potentially with a hamstring injury. He is not on the field as best we can tell. Second and goal. Cronkite is the running back. Handoff Powell. They come right. 
He reached for it. It's in the end zone. It's pin oh, it's not picked up. It is oh recovered. Oh, my goodness. Is that a touchdown? I think it's going to be. I do, too. Josh The player Hammond. was down before he broke the plane. It's third down and goal. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Wow. Brandon Powell was fighting for the first for the touchdown. Did his knee go down? Yes, it yes, did. It the did. ball was down. Yes, it did. The fumble was not even a fumble as he goes down and it was whistled six inches short of the touchdown. There it is. Here we go. Third and goal. Scarlett is the running back. They give it to Scarlett. Boom! Rashawn Evans. Boy, he, he hit that hole as fast as you can do it. Watch him hit this 32 right side. Bang! Oh, my. The acceleration. Watch him accelerate right there. Hits him right in the chest. Florida will go for it. I agree with this call, 100%. You can't take a field goal here. Play action. He's being chased. Let's it go in the end zone. Did he get it? No, he did not. Dalvin Tomlinson was chasing Appleby. Have to do it. You have to throw it too. And on fourth down, I'm wondering if this wasn't supposed to be a pop pass to the left side of this formation. Goldsby had a chance, but he came down out of bounds. I think Fitzpatrick is the guy that frees the ball, but he would have come out of bounds anyway. I think it was going the other direction on the play. Alabama, goal line stand. They've got the football. We are back. Mr. Danielson. Yeah, third down, fourth down. I don't mind going for it on third down. Rashawn Evans stones it. Have to go for it. It was going to be a throwback to the tight end, Siante Lewis. David Sharp blocks out the tight end. Siante Lewis falls down on the play. When he falls down, there's nothing Appleby can do. But to get rid of it, you just try on fourth down. And third down, no big deal. You throw it away. But on fourth down, you got to try for the touchdown. And so from the two, Alabama's offense, first down 10. They give it to Damian Harris. How about that for a burst in left guard? Quincy Wilson. Well, there's a lot of talk always on that Alabama sideline. Nick Saban gets involved in the flow of the game with Lane Kiffin. If he feels it's too much of finesse, too much of the outside, he'll say, run the ball up the middle power, and then they'll start doing it. Left side, Harris. Oh, what a little stutter step. He hesitated and moved to his right, and a big, big gain. That's 23 yards. You know what works so well, though, is both of them are really right. Lane Kiffin is telling Nick throughout the game, that my wide perimeter game is softening them up for the power game. And Nick says, give him the power game. Lane kind of fights a little bit, but it works. It's a good partnership. First down 10, they moved in two plays out to the 34. Play action, hurts. Throw it away, first down. Yep. I wish I would have learned this lesson when I was playing. So much easier up here. But on those first down calls, the coach is willing to give them to you, but you have to bail them out. If it's not there, give me second and 10, not second and 20. It was Kavanis Davis who got there, number 95. And it is now second down and officially 19. Antonio Callaway re-emerging from the locker room. Right side this time, nothing. 
Caleb Brantley, we haven't called his name that much. Let's go down to Allie LaForce. Hey, Vern, I did get confirmation that Callaway went to the locker room. He was dealing with a hamstring injury, and before he went to the locker room, I was able to watch him try to stretch it. He was punching the ground with his fist. He was in so much pain. No matter how much they tried to stretch it out, he couldn't loosen it up. He's going to be dealing with it the rest of the game, but he's doing everything he can to get back in. All right, Allie, thank you. Third down, 19. Hurts steps up. Oh, he's got a man wide open. It's our Darius Stewart. What a big play. Jalen Hurts wasn't the best throw, but catchable. Well, it was sold by a great route inside, bend out, and then come in. Watch him bend out right now and then get the safety to bite. That's all he needed and makes the catch. Slightly behind, as Vern told you, but what a pass route. Here's Harris again. Little spin move as contact was made. It's a zone route. All the receivers know it. You stretch the zone by faking like you're going to go to the corner and you open up that throwing lane for the quarterback. Perfect route by Adarius Stewart. And a 31 yard gain on that pass play. Now OJ Howard sets up to the left side. Bo Scarborough is the running back. It's second down and two as Alabama has moved from its own two yard line after a goal line stand. Scarborough, watch him rumble. Boom. First and goal. Robinson and Pierce Baker. Well, I tell you, if that doesn't remind you of Eddie Lacy when we were here in 2012, big man coming around the left side, and you got DBs going for it and saying, I'm going low on this big man. Left side. Touchdown. Bo Scarborough, that's your basic 98-yard drive following four plays by Florida from the two-yard line. Yeah, an eight-play drive, one pass, right down the middle. Nick Saban said, or Lane Kiffin, whatever, doesn't matter. I want more power. When we throw, we'll throw it deep, and we'll play what I used to remember as Alabama football. <laughs> Adam Griffith has had a tough day, had an extra point blocked earlier. This one is nailed. Well, just think about this for if you're Florida. You had first and goal at the three. You get nothing. Alabama had third and 19. And three plays later, Alabama put seven points on the board. Let the big guy run. Touchdown for Scarborough. Time for a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. For more, here's Allie. Last night at their annual dinner, the SEC inducted a new class of 14 football legends. Gator great Steve Spurrier was honored as both a player and a coach. And Alabama All-America left tackle Chris Samuels represented the Tide. But the highlight of the night was when Commissioner Greg Sankey surprised everybody by inducting our very own Vern Lundquist as part of the class of 2016. For the first time, the Commissioner of the Southeastern Conference is naming a legend who doesn't have one of our diplomas on his wall. And that is Vern Lundquist, SEC legend, voice of the SEC on CBS from 2000 to 2016. The real highlight was when Greg Sankey introduced my wife, Nancy, and she got a standing ovation. How about that? Oh, it was just great. Well, bravo. Everybody loves you here. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Chris Thompson. Chris Thompson. Football. Who came away with it? There's still a scrum. Ah. I think it was Trayvon Diggs, number seven, that got the big hit that produced the fumble. And Derek Dieter, I thought he had it. I assume that was Derek Dieter right there. He plays a lot of special teams. 
but it was Diggs who got the hit. Dieter has the ball pop right to him. An interesting thing about Garrett Dieter, as Vern told you, catching all that pass, those passes last year at Bowling Green, he basically came to Alabama this year to prove he could play special teams, to give an impression to the NFL scouts. Fascinating. Tony Brown follows Powell, and Powell drops it. Powell has caught nine, but those nine have gone only for 59 yards. Second down, 10. Getting late in the third quarter, 40 to 16. Callaway's back in the lineup. But it hits to the left side. Minka Fitzpatrick with the tackle. Allie? Vern, even though you're not on Twitter yourself, Twitter is blowing up with messages. And congratulations to you and the incredible career in the SEC that you have had. And one of those messages was from one of your biggest fans, Jack Nicholas, referencing the 1986 Masters. How about that? How about that? I think I might have to start talking here if we have yeah. more of this stuff, huh? We'll get more Twitter to tell me to <laughs> stop talking. So start talking, Vern. <laughs> oh, boy. This is tougher than I thought it would be. <laughs> Appleby. Reuben Foster. Fourth down. So Jack Nicholas has a Twitter account. Yeah, it's um, you ready to start doing that when you're done? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. You're done with that, right? Yeah. I never started it. No, I'm <laughs> done with it. <laughs> Johnny Townsend on to punt. Trayvon Diggs. Flag. Oh. And there's no flag on that play. No, I know, but there's a Florida football player down holding his knee. It's Chris Thompson. It is. Number 85. Yeah, I think that's a good no call. Everybody just trying to get the ball During the out. Return, illegal block in the back on the return team. Number 48, half the distance, first down. Chris Thompson, as we said, is the injured player. Senior out of Gainesville. Take another look. That might be one of those scares right in the middle. 85 right there. Takes his own player from behind her. I bet it mostly was a scary incident for Chris Thompson. Well, we are going to take our group to Baltimore next week. The Army Navy game presented by USAA. Tough day for Navy today. They lost their quarterback and a running back. It all begins with the Auto Trader College Football today, next Saturday, a special time, 2.30 Eastern. Alabama first down and 10. They lead 40 to 16. Right side, Bo Scarborough. Bo Scarborough, who early in his career, so much was thought of him potential-wise, struggled through injuries, and then struggled to find playing time to kind of mesh in the new Lane Kiffin offense. But you can see what an important weapon he is as a change of pace back. Here comes Jalen Hurts. And now Quicken Loans presents today's scholar athletes. 
Our athletes are O.J. Howard for Alabama, Austin Appleby, the graduate for Florida. Quicken Loans' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Alabama and Florida's General Scholarship Fund. Final 45 seconds, third quarter. Hurts. Hurts! That can't be more than the third called run play for the right. quarterback in this game. When I was watching Florida practice, it was goal number one to keep that quarterback, Jalen Hurts, in the pocket and force him to beat him throwing the football. Well, he's run six times for minus eight yard, of course, in college football. They still subtract sacks off the running game. I thought I'd get that rule changed before I retire. Oh, I guess you're going to have to not going to lobby happen. from afar. Yeah. Why do they keep sacks if they don't take it <laughs> off the passing yards? I've never understood. Among other things, I've never understood. That's the end of three. Our score 40 to 60. Tide rolling, as we said. We'll return to Atlanta right after this message and a word from your local station. Touchdown, Florida. Touchdown, Bo Scarborough, Crimson Tide. Florida did score first, but the decisive drive, I think, well, a four-play goal line stand defensively by Alabama, after which they went 98 yards to increase the lead to 40-16. We begin the fourth, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Ali LaForce. Here's a little toss to our Darius Stewart. Oh, he is necktied uh, up high. Well, if there was anything definitive about this fourth quarter, it was that the four plays defensively. Rashawn Evans, I'll never forget that. Absolutely. That uh, tackle he made on third down. And then, boom, here they go. Yeah, I've been watching this Alabama team for 10 years when they've been a factor here, and they've just got so many different ways. It's amazing. They're, they're the one team in college football that they line up and say, hmm, what do we need today? And they're put together so solidly that they can attack you where you are the weakest. It's Scarborough again. That's his seventh carry. He has a long today of 34 yards. Quincy Wilson with the tackle. His Alabama defense has done about as good a job. I thought that last drive was probably a shock to their system, being able to go 98 yards like that. But until then, I thought they were having a normal day. Scarborough again. Well, it would appear now that Alabama is going to win its 25th in a row. Miami, national title after 34, USC, yes. Alabama's 10 away from that. First down and 10. Damian Harris is back in. Reverses field, comes up the middle, and is popped, but he still picked up five, perhaps six. That's McMillan. Yeah, it just feels like the juice of this Alabama, excuse me, this Florida defense now is, just isn't there. They look up at the clock. They just don't have that same trigger, that quick start and playing with the enthusiasm they were, you know, two or three drives ago. Damian Harris gets out of the tackle and moves it all the way down to the 32-yard line. Damian Harris, another five-star recruit. Came here to play a little different offense than the one he's played, but you can see his skills. He's as good a one cut back as we have in college football. First down 10 after the game of 21. Now they come back with Sparkle. You just start thinking as you watch this game, Vernon, you watch 
this uh, the way this team has been put together by Alabama. What did Florida show today, maybe to their future opponents, that they could take advantage of? Surely they're not going to gain any confidence about being able to run the ball right at them. So I think they're going to say we have to chuck it around and number one, drill into their head that you cannot take chances on at least on first and second down. You have to protect that ball at quarterback. On second down, Jalen Hurts looks into the end zone. Now he'll put it on the ground and a very positive play down to the 20 yard line for Hurts. And when you have a quarterback that can be calm around all these great athletes, because look what he's kind of gone through this season. Remember the first half of the year? Yep. He fumbles it. He handled that old Miss game when they got down by 24 points. That tough LSU game. Threw an interception early. He's his demeanor, obviously his skill set, but his demeanor and the great players around him. He's just taken advantage of them and calmly led this team to what looks like an undefeated season. Quick flip, or Darius Stewart. And he is uh, knocked out of bounds. Whoa. Jared Davis, number 40. In a collision. Uh, Stewart's chatting with Jared Davis. Stewart has only played in nine games this year. I think Jared Davis was just a little bit off balance at the end of that play. No harm, no foul there at the end. Joshua Jacobs now in. Uh, th think about this, Gary. You've got a freshman at quarterback, now a freshman at running back. Scarborough's only a sophomore. And Harris is a sophomore. Hurts. Running down. Chauncey Gardner. And of course, on the offensive line, you know, Jonah Williams has played the whole year. Two right. freshman right tackle. And right now, as Alabama does this drive, I got to believe Nick Saban thinking if we can score here, get this thing under seven minutes, we may just get some other players on the field. Or at least not run our quarterback so much. Uh, Jared Davis, who's missed the last three, re-injured. That's not good to see. Time called. And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Well, Florida got the opening kickoff and moved smartly down the field. The touchdown to take a 7-0 lead, but... Alabama is resilient, are they not? Jalen Hurts, Derek Dieter, and a 33-2 response. Two non-offensive touchdowns today. This one, Minka Fitzpatrick, and in the third quarter, after a goal line stand, a 98-yard touchdown drive. Here is Jared Davis. He was injured on the last play. Well, he takes on the block from Jonah Williams. I think he might have sprung that ankle right there as he stepped back. He tries to finish out the play, which watch him go down. He's just got nothing left. The question all week was, would he be able to play? And he's played as well as he could. And he is one proud man. I'll tell you that. Third down four. Well, Allie can give us an update on Jared Davis as soon as she can. Third and four, 40 to 16. Right side. Joshua Jacobs, two, three, four flags down. Another flag. Oh, yeah. Turn him upside down. That's going to be called at the end of this play. I don't know if there was a prior penalty or not, but the last one was on Florida. So Brian grabs the face mask, and then on top of it, he slams him. Oh, boy. 
Man, he threw him down straight. He didn't slam him on his head. But you can't pick him up and slam him like that. They're going to call that every time. Might get both, but it's going to be half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. Taven Bryan, number 93. So you've got the obvious face mask. Yep. Again, Matt Liffler is the head of this officiating crew. Big Cam Robinson at the end of this play comes in to protect his guys, number 74. Ah. It's a shot from behind from Daniel McMillan. And let's see if it's one of those two on one side, one on the other side, and everything is waved. During the play, personal foul, face mask on the defense, 93. That penalty is canceled during the play Unnecessary roughness, number 93. That player is a flagrant foul for ejected, number 93. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense, number 13. Both penalties will be assessed. That is number 13's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. First down. You know what? It, 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 it you really, don't like it? it's not logical, okay? Two penalties happened live. One penalty happened dead, and nothing happens. It's just not logical. They're going to have to look at this rule. They're going to march off. They were all yeah. on Florida? Yeah. Oh, I thought oh, yeah. the last one was on. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it wasn't I Robinson. thought it was on Cam. It was on Dave McMillian. Yes. Oh, I thought, I thought Cam Robinson got one. All on Florida. So they go to half the distance three times you go half the distance once half the distance twice two times and, and Taven Bryant out of the game it. yeah I thought they called it on Cam Robinson and that's what McAvoy says well first and goal after that tumult Diggs Scarborough Down short of the goal line. Scarborough with a, with a carry. That's his 10th for 90 yards. Spins right off McMillan's tackle and gets it pretty darn close. Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. Uh, this is the elephant package for sure is. Alabama. So you've got Henskus and Robinson to the left. The two huge guys. That's Jonathan Allen moving. Oh my goodness. The hole was so wide that Deron Payne fit through with a lot of space and he delivered too. Watch how much space the offensive line creates up front. Pierce Baker and look at Deron Plain take on that block and level them. Cam Robinson and Purse Baker open up a wide hole. You, you, you could have walked Ooh, an elephant absolutely. through there. Absolutely. Yes, that was <laughs> the essence of efficiency. And How would you like to have been David Reese on that exactly. play? That inside linebacker, number 33. And watch that 340 pound guy coming at you. Gary 94. Yeah. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh, to your point about establishing the run, as they say. Sure have. 15 play drive, 14 runs. Let's be able to championship game salute Thank you. to the voice of the SEC on CBS, Vern Lundquist. Uh, 
Nice. Nine more minutes. Yeah. Let's I, enjoy I, it. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, how great. I've been asked a lot, Gary, about the final season. Right. The everlasting emotion I'm going to take with this. Well, I, I, it's a great one. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And, and you know, the, it's the unplanned stuff. It would be amazing if they could travel with us in and out of these places. You, you at the end, you were almost like the Pope. Ah. We, I mean, I mean, literally. You could you feel that love? Yeah, I could. It, 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 it was incredible. I think it was so unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> in 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 a very real sense. Well, because, we're, oh as boy. the commissioner said. You are a legend in this league. You are as important to the growth of this league when it went from a footprint in the southeast to a national brand. You are as responsible as anyone. Well, greatest assignment of my life. DeAndre Goldsby. Gary, take us through this while well, I catch we a breath. Asked who is out? What? Look at this. Oh. So now there, there could just be a lot of people down here in the South. I'm thinking the same thing. But here's what I will say. I hope that the committee, when they stand up and decide that Ohio, if Ohio State's in, they say we looked at the four champions and we decided Ohio State was better than number four. If Kirby Holcutt can explain that, then put in the team you want. But the first stage of it is to take the four champions and then find if someone unequivocally should unseat one of those four. That's the way I read it. Appleby now has thrown 37 times. And it's Ohio State is a special football team. Yes. And they've got a great resume. But. 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 They did not win the championship exactly. and Penn State beat them. So let's see how the committee is going to play this because they are giving a huge precedent to college football, saying that we will leapfrog one of our champions. In the left, incomplete. Jordan Cronkite. Well, the commissioner of the Big Ten, this is his quote, his statement earlier. I was a campaign manager four years ago for the four <laughs> best conference champions. We lost that election. What we decided on was the four best teams, which I'm fine with. I myself think Alabama's done enough. Whether they have a conference championship, they will. Ohio State has done enough. What we have right now are two slots available. Appleby. Down. Jonathan Allen and Tim Williams, two of the serious defensive stars for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, I haven't said his name too much tonight. You know he's been taking on a lot of blocks, freeing up for those line uh, linebackers, but that time he showed you the greatness that he showed us all year. Just for the Ohio State fans to settle down just a little bit, oh, many are watching. Now remember, Ohio State knocked off this Alabama team two years ago. And of course, the Florida fans, don't they have a coach named Urban Meyer? I heard that. That might tilt it a bit. <laughs> Are you suggesting? We're going inside the polls here. Oh, goodness. Hello. Jonathan Allen. Oh, the stars are starting to shine. He is a sure thing first teamer, All American to do level Well, there was talk about whether he or Miles Garrett would be the first player taken by my Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Either would be a good pick, to tell you the truth. But, I'm really uh, proud of you. <laughs> well, that is taking ownership. Well, I loved playing for him, too. I know you did. Johnny Townsend on the punt on fourth and 31. Line drive. Diggs at the 44. Oh, wow. How nice of a move is that? Still up. What a cut. All the way down to the 20-yard line. Chris Thompson was first there. 
As you say, small mistakes against Alabama pay big dividends because they take advantage of everything. As Vern said, low punt means a big return. Our score is a little more extended than that. 47 to 16. Our aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. For 60 years, Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest rivalries. Well, the guys on the field now are the recruits that were superstars two years ago. Yeah, that's and then right. The, they're the next line of four and five star players that have, are waiting their turn to get on the field. And the quarterback is Cooper Bateman for the year. He won't be throwing it here, I would not think. 12 or 14. And they hand it off to Derek Gore. There's Jalen Hurts. He will lead his team to the SEC championship. And again, he was not the starter for the USC game. That was Blake Barnett. Hertz came in. Look at his demeanor. I mean, it's just yeah. the essence of calmness. I, you have to believe, though, the way that he handled spring football and the hand all fall, that the Alabama staff wanted him to be the quarterback, but felt it was better to go to Barnett to start the season and bring him off the bench, as we showed before. He fumbled the first play. Right. That was against USC in Arlington. Here's Gore again. And the clock now shows 525. And the Napa play of the game will be presented. I'm just guessing now we're going to hear the voice of Eli Gold again. So it is going to be interesting, though, Vern. I mean, uh, you're going to have a Big Ten champion, Wisconsin, who, by the way, has a lot of things to talk about, whether they should be in the Final Four. Played a tremendously tough uh, crossover. They played both Michigan and Ohio State. Played them tough. Overtime loss, beat LSU, but that Penn State win against Ohio State, that should complicate the matters when that committee, just imagine Barry Elder as a net. Oh boy. <laughs> what will he be saying? On second down, it's score again. <laughs> All right, Garrett, let me, let me, let me tee you up. Here. I'm getting so much trouble with this stuff. Oh, well, stuff. look at the headline. But make college football great again. I, I just thought this up. You think that yeah, could work? Yeah, yeah, right, right. I believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> the four champions, I believe, should win. We thought Alabama had cemented, even if they lost. Obviously, they didn't. The question is, if Clemson loses, obviously, Ohio State is in. But if they all win, if they all win, right. is Ohio State in? Are they automatically in? Are they in now before the game tonight? Because at number two, most all of the talking heads are saying they're already in. Gore again. Oh, there you are. Derek Gore. And the whole team will be excited about that. The fifth string running back with the second string offensive line pushing it in for a rushing touchdown. Don't forget, he also blocked a punt tonight. Yes, he did. Uh, good for him. Again, that, that Florida defense, uh, it's just tough. Tough to finish a game like this. So much proud co pride coming in, and they know the score, and they're just ready to get on to 217. Here's Andy Papanastos. He backs up Pinheiro, and look at the congratulations for Derek Gore. And the sadness for the games. Oops, stop. That NCIS Steamboat Springs would have made the air before <laughs> I retired, but I guess it's just not to be. You, got, you could go over to the set if oh, you wanted yeah, to, right? That would have been great. Absolutely. Right on Lincoln Avenue. I mean, it would have been great. Not to be. 54 16. 348 remaining. J.K. Scott will kick off. And 
that will be returned from the one. Chris Thompson Whoop, tripped up. Oh, well, we got our guys on site with Adam, Rick, and Brian. The Jeep Post Game Show live from the Georgia Dome. That's coming up when we blow the whistle on this one. Look, they're already in place. Going, no, oh, Brian's not there. They're going over their ad libs. <laughs> Look at it. Adam's pointing at the teleprompter. Well, how about this? The last two years, just the dominance of this Alabama defense. Total yards rushing. For Florida in the last two years, five. Last year they had 21. This year they're minus 16 and trying to get up to the out of the negative yards territory. What's it going to take to knock off this Alabama team in the final four of the playoffs? 54 16 319 to go in second down and three gosh it seems like hours ago that Florida took a seven nothing lead right. and the excitement in this place was palpable and now for all the, a few hundred the Florida stands are empty and look at this time on Mark Thompson well we've mentioned Jalen Hurts and the potential to become a true freshman to lead his team to a national championship. The only one who's ever done it, Jamel Holloway, was a freshman in Oklahoma when they met, won the national title in the 80s. By the way, this is going to be the 25th win in a row for Alabama. The all time record of consecutive wins. Bud Wilkinson, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma yeah. in the 50s, they went to 47. And Notre Dame knocked them off. Appleby, right side. Siante Lewis, 2.10 to go. Levi Wallace, number 39. Back up corner. Well, Austin Appleby has worked six years to have a game like today. Got out a little early with some great throws. Listen, it wasn't just him. Uh, he'd like to have those two throws back. I, you know, again, that second one, I don't know if it was a miscommunication or not. But all in all, Florida just not quite good enough. You got to help with the running game. You, you just can't have a passing game. You got to have both. Up the middle, Mark Thompson. Game tackle. I see Christian Miller, number 47. Appleby for the day. Remember, he started six of seven on that first touchdown drive. That went 64 yards. I think that first down bootleg, when they got the ball back on the 40-yard line, when he threw it over the middle of the field, if he'd have just tossed that one away, that was the one where he was just feeling it was his day and he was going to let it fly. Yeah, I think of the one he'd like to have over was that one. Second down, five. Mark Thompson gets the carry again. So you've got the uh, next generation of five-star recruits on the That's field right. right now. And there's going to be 25 more coming this yeah, year. of course. <laughs> it's all part of the process. One of Nick Saban's favorite phrases. Third down, two. Final 35 seconds of the 25th SEC championship game. And the Alabama Crimson Tide are going to take a 5-4 lead in this head-to-head. -head. Look at Nick yep. pumping his fist. He is really, really happy with this one. And here's his former offensive coordinator, Jim McElwain. Let's go down to Allie, who is with Nick Saban.
Coach, congratulations on your third straight SEC championship title. What a well-rounded effort it was today with six different players scoring. How impressed were you with the full team effort? Well, it sure was. And I was really proud of the way our guys came out in the second half and played. We didn't start out very well, but you know, this is a great win for our team. These, these players really deserve this. Uh, going undefeated this year, I was a little concerned going into the game how we would come out here and play, but I was really pleased and proud of the way they competed in the game. Florida's got a good team. They got a little wore down in the game, but uh, Tim's done a great job there. But I'm so proud of our guys. I'm proud for our fans, and it's always something special to win the SEC. Thank you, Coach. Enjoy it. All right, thank you. Watch Nick as the final gun sounded and he entered the field. Yeah, it matters. Yep, a little bit of a salute to his team, a little bit of a salute to the fans, and the understanding that he put a lot of work into it, and it came out exactly the way he wanted. Now let's take a look at the player of the game presented by Chick-fil-A. We had a multitude from which to choose, but Reuben Foster, 11 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, two sacks. For him, it's just another average game. And being the leader of that defense. The defense turned this game around. Special teams turned this game around. And I think Ruben Foster has been playing spectacular football all year and deserves it. Ruben Foster, sure thing, first round draft pick. A sure thing, all American. And it's now time for our Napa play of the game. We're going to. Put it on the shoulders of Minka Fitzpatrick. Yep, a little ball underthrown. Fitzpatrick gets it, and when he starts going, he's too good of an athlete to stop. He goes in 44 yards. It's time to once again welcome our old friend, Eli Gold. On a first and ten play, Appleby looks, throws across the middle, intercepted Alabama, their second, taken by Minka Fitzpatrick, who blockers down the near side, 20, hurdles a man at the 15, down the left sideline, he is in, touchdown Alabama, 44 yards on the Crimson Tide, second interception of the day. Uh, always great to hear his voice. So for all of our crew here in the booth, David Bolton, Chuck Gardner, Butch Baird, our stage manager, Amanda Stork, and the final score, 54-16. Next week, Army versus Navy. We will all be in Baltimore for that game. Final score once again, 54-16. Nice job, Lane Kiffin. For Allie the Force, Gary Danielson, our entire 70 person crew. The Jeep Post Game Show is up next after these messages. CBS Sports presents the Jeep Post Game Show. Welcome to the Jeep Post Game Show. I'm Adam Zucker. A reminder, tonight on CBS begins with NCIS New Orleans and Criminal Minds, followed by a new edition of 48 Hours Tonight, only CBS. So Alabama wins the SEC championship. It's 26, beating Florida 54 to 16. Lots to come here on the Jeep Post Game Show. We go to Allie LaForce now with a trophy presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, for the third consecutive year your SEC champion the Alabama Crimson Tide you don't have this kind of success without a full team effort but we start with the MVP of this football game and it goes to the man standing right behind me the leader of this defense Reuben Foster Ruben, you're a senior. You have been the leader vocally, physically, you name it, of this defense. What's it like to see all of that hard work come together for a moment like this before you go out? Man, it's big, man. Like, man, like th road time, man. <laughs> I know this is an emotional time for you as you look around at all of these loyal fans. The reason you play this game, the guy standing right next to you, what would you like to say to them? 
Man, I'd like to thank y'all to have my back, man. Coach Saban, I would like to thank you for having my back and trusting me. And I'd like to uh, thank my offense and my defense for believing in me, man. Like, I love y'all boys, man. I love y'all boys. Coach, it's hard to repeat, let alone three-peat. Why was this the group to do it? Well, you don't always get what you want in life, but you mostly get what you deserve. And these guys have done a fantastic job all season long and winning 13 games and deserve to win the SEC and really showed it in a dominant fashion tonight. So I'm really proud of them. Now I'd like to give it over to Greg Sankey, who has a few words in the trophy presentation. Commissioner. Thank you, Allie. Let me say thank you to the greatest fans of college football in America, the fans of the Southeastern Conference. Join me in thanking the Georgia Dome and our great friend Vern Lundquist once more for all they've done for this great league. And it's my privilege to say congratulations to the University of Florida, Coach Jim McElwain on a fine season, and now to give away the 2016 Football Championship Trophy of the Southeastern Conference to the University of Alabama Crimson Tide. One more time, everybody, for the 2016 SEC Champions. The fun continues here at the Georgia Dome. The confetti raining down on the SEC champs from Alabama. We will talk with Rick Neuheisel and Brian Jones about what they thought from today's dominating win by Alabama, 54 to 16, as we continue on the Jeep Post Game Show.